ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس انا خلقناكم من ذكر وانثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا ان اكرمكم عند الله اتقاكم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلال ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار الله سبحانه وتعالى reminds us in the Quran in fact the first verse that was revealed in the Quran اقرا باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الانسان من علق اقرا وربك الاكرم الذي علم بالقلم the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was in the cave and jibril came to him and squeezed him he said read the word iqra has two meanings the prophet understood to be the first one which is to read and he says to him i'm not one who reads the prophet was illiterate and he did not know how to read jibril squeezed him again read iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq and he came to understand that this is the second meaning of what is being revealed to him now the prophet is going to become someone that re- receives revelation that the words that he's going to speak will not be his it'll be the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the quran so the word iqra again has two meanings one is to read books and the other one is recitation so from there on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes the one who's teaching prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through jibril in islam more than any other religion more than any ideology islam has emphasized knowledge more than anyone else just to point out the word alim occurs in the Quran or allam allama or to learn or knowledge repeats in the Quran about 140 times in another variation about 27 up to the word kitab when you look at it up to 200 and uh, 230 times so if you look at the word that is related to knowledge whether it, whether it is writing or reading uh, you'll find about 700 and above times it is repeated in the Quran So there's a lot of emphasis in knowledge when it comes to when it comes to Islam. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's teaching, when Allah gives a description about himself, he says, "Wa huwa alladhi fi as-sama'i ilahun wa fi al-ardi ilahun wa huwa al-hakim al-'alim." When Allah gives a description about himself, he says, "He is and it is Allah who's the only deity that is worthy of worship in the heavens and on this earth and he's the wise he's the knowing so when you talk about knowledge is a noble thing is a characteristic of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you look at the first creation adam alayhi salam when allah created him allah has given him something that has honored him that has taken him above all the creatures including the angels allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa 'allama adam al-asma'a kullaha so if you look at the story starts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates him and he informs the angels wa id qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa qalu ataj'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yafsiku ad-dima' wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdik wa nuqaddisu lak the angels make an argument this being that you will create because they've seen the the, the, the creatures that were put on earth before before us what they have done So the angels say that 
are you going to create a being which will corrupt the land and will shed blood? This is the argument that make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know what you know not. And from there on, Allah teaches them knowledge. Allah teaches them names of things. قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ The angels, when they see what Allah has done to Adam, and when, when Adam is able to uh, teach them, because at first what happens, Allah asks the angels, what are the names of these things? Name them. They're not able to name them. And who is the one who comes up and names all the names, well, who, all the objects? is Adam alayhi salam. And now all the angels are asked to prostrate to Prophet Adam. Why are they prostrating to him? He's not a deity, but rather out of respect. <laughs> out of respect for his knowledge. Out of respect, respect of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored such to Prophet, um, Prophet Adam. Allam al-insan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has taught mankind. Allamahu al-bayan. Allah is the one who taught us the language that we speak. We speak different languages. But the ability for you to speak was taught to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who has programmed us, uh, who has given us the ability. So alhamdulillah, Allah has given us that knowledge. Otherwise, we would have been like the animals. Or there is, the, if you look at the communication, the way has the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given uh, the humans the ability to communicate, the ability to write, the ability to read, is far superior when you look at other creatures. So alhamdulillah, Allah has given us all of this knowledge. <laughs> And when Allah talked about the people of knowledge, what does He say? قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah says, are, those, are they equal? Those who possess knowledge and those who do not. And the knowledge that we're talking about is the knowledge of the religion. But as Muslims, when we talk about knowledge, for most of the time, we limit ourselves and we say, knowledge of the religion. The knowledge that we're talking about is the knowledge of the religion, the knowledge of... Uh, secular knowledge as we call it, or any other knowledge which are beneficial. It is the original one who has taught us all of this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Allah has taught his prophet some of the dua that he should make of all the other prophets as, as well, what was the dua? Qul Rabbi zidni ilma. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase me in knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again, he reminds us of those who fear him. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ The ones who the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who are knowledgeable. Knowledgeable about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you know about Allah, you will love him, you will feel closer to him, and it will create a a fear and also hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will fear. But if you do not know Allah, it'll be hard for the person to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now again. When we look at the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes a lot when it comes to knowledge. So is knowledge only uh, religion? No, it is not. What made Prophet Adam superior is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught him. And let's look, out, let's look at the Islamic history. Throughout Islamic history, you'll find that the Muslims did not only uh, master the, the knowledge of the hereafter, but they've also, they were also masters of the knowledge of this world. Uh, you'll find that you know, algebra is a, a term that we're familiar with. In schools we learn, you look at the Arabic numerals, the people who came up with this concept were Muslims. And they were not just Muslims, they were Muslims who were scholars. And the scholars were learning about other subjects so that they could give a proper fatwa a proper, a proper ruling uh, in, in, uh, when it came to the uh, particular uh, subject. Ibn Taymiyyah is uh, said to have said, when he, before he became a scholar, he knew about astronomy, he knew about math, he knew about so many other fields. And sometimes it became a prerequisite. If you wanted to give fatwa, you had to have understanding of what you're giving uh, fatwa about. And now, just like we have respect towards doctors, you know, you don't go to someone and say, give me diagnostic and give me a, a, a medicine. What do you do? You look at the qualification of the person. Now, in the Muslim world, we have separated the two knowledge. We said the knowledge of the hereafter is here, 
It is only for certain people, and the knowledge of, the, uh, of this world is here, and it's only for certain people. And this is not how it should be. The Muslim should be expert in both. <coughs> Allah put you on this earth, so knowing him is not an option. Knowing him is an obligation. The knowledge of the religion is obligation. Also, what is obligation in this country that we live in is for you to have certain skills. We do not want to be beggars of the government. We, we do not want to be dependent to be. Uh, we don't. We don't want. To, we don't want to depend on others. We want others to depend upon us. The Muslim is one who's powerful. The Muslim is one who is given. You're on the other side of the uh, of the uh, of. You're, you're on the other side. You're at the side of giving, not the side of receiving. If you're the one who's receiving, it has to be temporary. You got to look at yourself and say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored me. Allah has made me Muslim. So I have to have knowledge so that I could be above everyone else. So I could be the one that is followed and respected. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad when he was teaching the Sahaba in many different occasions, there was a Sahabi who was begging. You've seen him, he was begging. He said, come here. Uh, he said, what do you have? He said, the man did not have much. The Prophet showed him business, how to trade. So he took him, uh, made him, you know, he sold one of his items, and he gave him axe, and he said, go out, go and work. So he gave him skills so that he doesn't have to beg. He gave him skills so he becomes independent. He gave him skills so that he can provide for his family. In this country that we live in, the doors, the opportunity is open. No one is going to teach, no one is going to tell you what not to do. You know, some other countries, you have your cousin has to be in uh, power, you know, position of power for you to receive something. But here is different. So let's look at what is happening in education when it comes to knowledge, what is happening in this country. Yes, a lot of us are immigrant and we came from Muslim countries and we came here, but it does not mean you settle for less. The latest. Uh, MCA test that came out is showing, I won't mention the particular, uh, it says people of color, of course, but then they made some subdivision, 70% failure rate when it comes to the children that we're sending the school to. And in some cases, it goes up to 80%. And in some cases, when you look at the English learners, which a lot of the people you could say who are the newcomers, you're looking up to... 94% failure rate. What happens in this country if the person is not educated? What happens? You go to school, you graduate the bottom of the class, you can end up working, <coughs> not bad, you're gonna, work at, you're gonna end up working at a warehouse, but this is not the position where Muslims need to be at. There was a brother, there was a story a brother was telling us, his brother was a programmer and he lived in New York. Uh, so they were moving him to Minnesota. So the company's talking to him and the company's telling him, come to Minnesota, the reason being is there are masjids, there are mus Muslims. Because he said, if I cannot go to the mosque and if I don't find a place to pray, I'm not going to come. When you have skills in this country, what happens? You're on the other end, you'll be the one demanding, you'll be telling the company, well listen, I need a place to pray. I remember a company I was working for, there, there was a room reserved for the Muslims. You'll come down and pray. So when you have skills and the people are depending upon you, then you, you're the one on the other side, you're, you dictate. So what happens, he comes, to the, he, comes to this, he comes to the airport, and they take him, he goes to work, goes to the masjid, and the place he's working at, he doesn't see a lot of Muslims. Uh, brother's making a good amount of money, he has very good skills, he is respected in his industry, but guess what? A lot of Muslims, he, he walks around, he says, they're full of the masjid. When I, when, I, when I go to the places where the people are supposed to be at, they're not there, what happened? <laughs> Because what happened is, right now what's happening in our community is that we're not looking after our kids. We're not looking, we're not saying, listen, we want to give, I want my kid to be the number one in school. I want them to be number one when it comes to the state test. Not because I'm going after the worldly life. So that he does not need to worry. You know, the Muslim is one who has the dunya on his hand and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his heart. You don't want the dunya to occupy you. But when you worry about bills, and we worry about your next meal, then guess what? <laughs> dunya becomes your priority. So having skills and giving skills to our children is important. Even if it passed you, giving your children skills is very important. And you'll find that in the Quran, those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given power, what do they use it for? 
Allah has given them the knowledge of this world, Allah has given them the knowledge of the hereafter, what do they use it for? They were helping the poor, they were helping the needy. And inshallah, in the second part of the khutbah, we shall touch upon some of this people. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا اللهم صل على محمد الله سبحانه وتعالى reminds us and he teaches us about Prophet Sulaiman Prophet Sulaiman this is an example of a person who possesses the knowledge of this world and the knowledge of the hereafter Allah سبحانه وتعالى gives Prophet Sulaiman a power to control over the jinn to control over the winds Allah has given him power what does he become he becomes a person who's caring for the needy. He, he becomes a person who's advocating for the animals. Because when you're given a power, what you do with that power matters. You can have a lot of money. You can have a lot of wealth. You can have, Allah can give you the keys to the dunya. And you could be corrupting uh, the land. And you could be shedding blood. But this is not the case of the Muslim. The Muslim, one who submits to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is one who uses his power to the right to the, to, 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 to where, he need, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. You'll find in some Muslim countries, who takes care of the masjids? Have you guys ever asked yourself, you know, normally when it comes to the masjids here, someone will come here and say, brothers, we're building a masjid, we want you guys to contribute. Some people are sitting here, they get irritated because they don't have anything to give. But if you were someone who had a lot of skills, let's say if all of us here had certain skills, and by the way, I'm not speaking for everyone, but from the scores that the government is releasing, if our children are failing 80%, you could have what kind of parents are sitting at home. You could, you, could, you could guess. And this is something else you guys could check out. You go to the schools where a majority of the people that are attending are Muslims, you'll find 98%, 95% some of the schools free reduced lunch. We did not come to this country to be beggars. We came to this country to have opportunities and to be number one. When, when people look at the Muslims, they should say, you know what, this is an example of how people should be. If you look at Indonesia, if you look at Malaysia, if you look at all these countries, they became Muslim for what reason? They've seen honest people, they've seen people who are working hard, they've seen people who are ahead of them. They, they are people who, who are worthy of being role models. And this is how the Muslim <laughs> needs to be. And this is the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us of Prophet Sulaiman. You'll find another person in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Dhul Qarnayn in Surah Al Kahf, and I'm sure some of you already recited the Surah today. What happens to him? He goes out, he finds people that are being uh, oppressed by Juj, Juj or Majuj. And what does, he does, what, what does he do for them? And Allah says he has given him knowledge of this world as well. He uses his power to help the needy. He uses his power to do good. And this, was, this is what happens when you get certain skills. You get money, what do you do with your money? You build a masjid. There was a story of two brothers in one of the Muslim countries. The two brothers used to fight over who's going to change the carpet. Because they both have a lot of money. And someone has to change the carpet. So they both want to do it. And there's only opportunity you know, he wants to get the contract to change the uh, masjid, masjid, uh, uh, the, the masjid uh, uh, carpet because he has a lot of money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him skills. He was able to do something with his things and he's helping the poor and he's helping the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you'll find some of the uh, dirty places happens to be masjid. You'll come in or a place where we teach our children the Quran on the weekend. What happened to the Muslims who were supposed to come in and help our children on the weekends? What happened to the Muslims who were supposed to help these children that are going to school that are not doing well? Where are we? The Muslims, in, uh, if you look at the Muslims several, one, a thousand years ago, if you look at in Baghdad, if you look at in uh, present day Spain, Al Andalus, the Muslims were the forefront because of education. But when we left education, what did we become? Now, some people, some, kids, some of the kids, if you have conversation with them, you know what they'll say to you? They'll say, listen, look at all the Muslim countries. There's war, and all of them are in third world countries. What kind of religion is this? Now, the religion of Allah gets to blame because we became lazy. It's not the, the problem is not the religion of Allah. The problem is us. We need to fix ourselves. We need to fix our situation. Imagine today, if we had 
and this is uh, an example that we use sometimes. If we had everyone who was sitting in here today, let's say was working for top companies in America, and we had businesses here, what would happen to, what, what kind of message would we be in? Sometimes you'll find a chef will come here, who's going to give for the sake of Allah, who's going to give for the sake of Allah, we fill up forms and people have to call, you know, they have to do a follow-up call, and people are not even going to answer. So, we're not, I'm not here to blame us, but we are, in, we are in a situation. And the reason why we are in a situation is because we have forgotten رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةُ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةُ وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ When the Muslim is making dua, what dua does he make? It's not one way. The Muslim is in, in, in a middle path. The Muslim is in a middle path. There is, uh, I remember a brother, he said he was going to do da'wah, he was going to go downtown and call the Muslims who are lost. If you find, there are several types of Muslims. There are those who did not receive Islamic education, and they did not receive the secular education. You'll find that the majority of them are now not able to build Islamic house, a Muslim house, because the brother cannot afford. He's working, making what? Uh, end means. He cannot afford to have a Muslim house because he's making a thousand, two thousand, two thousand dollars. What are you gonna do? You're gonna pay the rent or you're gonna pay for food. So what happens? They're gonna end up in downtown anywhere, and you know, all night they're awake. And they need someone to talk to them, and of course they use uh, different <coughs> appeals to make them forget about their pain. That's one category. The second ca category you have, there are those who have put emphasis in the Islamic knowledge, and by the way, this is like the minority. And they have produced children who are hardworking, they know their religion, they know themselves, they go out, but again, he is struggling. But alhamdulillah, at least his iman is saved. And there are those who parents who have produced children who are working for big companies, they're successful, they're top of the school, and they do not know what Sami Allah Liman Hamidah means. We've given them halfway knowledge. And we did not teach them the knowledge of the hereafter. But what we want, the type of a Muslim that we want, inshallah, is a person who when it comes to his worldly life, he's number one. But when it comes to the hereafter, he's also number one. And there are those within the Muslim community who fall into that category. But we could say that's not the majority. That is not the majority. And in this country, when your child gets A, or when your child becomes a number one, no one's going to say, oh, he is this type of skin color, he's a Muslim, take it away. And one place where we could all have an equal race is schools, in education, so let's make sure we produce strong Muslims who are uh, competing in this world and in the hereafter. Inshallah, fi final reminder, again, when we talk about uh, knowledge of this world, remember, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the original one who was teaching people. He's the one that taught Prophet Idris how to write. He's the one that taught Prophet Yusuf dreams. He's the one that taught Prophet uh, Sulaiman and Dawood, Dawood was taught, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made easy for him the making of a metal, so he can make it out of a garment. So if you look at, for us as Muslims, knowledge is not separated. So of course, the knowledge of the hereafter is noble, but let's not forget that which Allah has given us in this world. Let's become volunteers for the weekend schools, because this is where our children are at. At least, let's put some time let it be one hour, two hour of volunteering towards making the other Muslim neighbors or your other Muslim brother uh, better. Because some people have language barriers, some people are new to the country, some people might not know the opportunity that is out there. We're Muslims, we're connected, so let's help one another. And this is how to become successful in this world. And the final verse, remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given success to Prophet Yusuf. Why? Prophet Yusuf becomes the minister who is in charge of finances, who is in charge of giving the food and everything like that in Egypt. Because number one, he was honest. They looked at him, this person is honest and he's able to do distribution. In this country, we should be producing Muslims that everyone says, Muslims are not Muslims. This person is worthy of that position. Let's put him, we trust him. Let's build a connection with our neighbors. And all this happens with knowledge, if you do not know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how are you going to talk to your neighbor? 
If you do not know about how your neighbor is feeling, how are you going to talk to them? So what we need is knowledge of this world and the hereafter. And towards the end, when Prophet Yusuf is dying, what dua does he make? رَبِّ قَدْ آتَيْتَنِي مِنَ الْمُلُكِ وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَنْتَ وَلِيِّي فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا وَأَلْحِقْنِي مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ He says, my Lord, you have given me something of sovereignty and taught me interpretation of dreams, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are my protector in this world and the hereafter. Cause me to die as Muslim and join me with the righteous. This is the dua that he made. Why? Allah made him successful in this world. And he was thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he did not forget his hereafter. He's making dua to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the iman to stay strong Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us knowledge so that we don't become dependent on others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the right path. اللهم انصر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات على الاحياء منهم والاموات انك سميع الدعاء اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد اقم الصلاه